How are you? All right, how's it going? Nice right to see you, Jeff. Nice like, to see you again. Uh, another drive, another Honda drive, and another Honda expert drive. So, a guy who really knows everything about Honda. Try and the last time we we drove was the Ridgeline, right? That's in correct. San Antonio. Yeah, San Antonio. That's like what two years ago? Yeah, I think so. Uh, time flies. It really flies. Huh? I know it's crazy. This has been a crazy year for Honda too. Exactly. Yeah, they've been so they've been so busy. Yeah. And apparently they're gonna be. I don't know if busier next year, but like there's a lot coming up the pipeline. But yeah. Anyway, we're now just driving the new Clarity, and this is the one of the three versions of the plug-in hybrid. They have the fuel cell, which. Uh, it already last year we drove it in Santa Barbara yep and they have the the electric which is coming the full electric which is coming next year right uh, actually I think they already launched it right I don't know I, I could be I, I think, th I think maybe, maybe the... on sale next year starting next okay. year. okay but uh, this is as you were just telling me a little while ago this is the second plug-in hybrid in Honda's history right yes they had the Accord plug-in which was available in limited markets uh, I believe it was a 2014 model year I don't think they, they built a lot of them, but like I said, it was only available in those markets where they got the Zev. The credits, credits. yeah. 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 Um, but this is uh, apparently, well, it is the first uh, 50 state plug-in for, for Honda, so it's kind of significant in that sense. I mean, it's a pretty advanced car. I mean, it has tons of technology and uh, some technology that I, I at least haven't seen in any, any other hybrids or plug-in hybrids. For the price, it's in between the least expensive and the most expensive. It's like around starts like around thirty-two. Yeah, and it's personally, I think the interior is really nice for that price point. I was really yeah. impressed when I sat in it. I thought the, the fuel cell was a very nice interior clarity as well. And but that you know that's a much higher sticker price car. So I was I was impressed when I saw the the actual pricing of this car. And you still get the very nice interior. So the technology in this car. Um, Includes, uh, for example, a new way of recharging the battery with these paddles back here on the, on the steering wheel, which uh, don't get confused so with uh, paddle shifters because this doesn't have a transmission, obviously, being a hybrid car. And um, so many other things that uh, I guess you have to learn a little bit about to, to use yeah. it and take advantage of all the technology, right? Yeah, you condition yourself a little bit. And if you kind of think of these sort of like paddle shifters, like we're going down a hill right now. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're in a car with a regular transmission and you, you click the left shifter to get some engine braking, well, you can kind of do the same thing with this. Um, but, but the difference is it's just basically engaging a, a higher rate of, of regenerative braking. So it effectively gives you a, almost like a gear down type of uh, yeah. response. So what other things have impressed you about? I mean, you haven't driven it already. Not yet. But like as a passenger of, of, of what we learned from the technical presentation and all that. Well, it's, it's pretty refined and uh, relaxed of course you know when in your pure EV mode it's very quiet and uh, you know nice sense of acceleration yeah by the uh, way this road is not the, the finest that's why you hear some noise yeah but. yeah it's a pretty coarse road and a lot of cracks in it um, but the uh, you know it's very the, the chassis feels really nice I mean look like, you know we, we've been on some quite twisty roads and the car just really seems to like like you know taking the turns no real uh, struggle at all. I mean, I haven't heard it squeal the tires even yet. Oh, no. I mean, we're not pushing it that hard, but it's no. it's just very uh, you know comfortable on these roads, and it's uh, you know the ride quality is a nice. Yeah, balance. I have to say, it drives really well. It responds well. Obviously, it's a hybrid, so it's not like sports car, even though it has a sport mode, which right. you feel the difference when you you push it on. So it's uh, I mean, it's a lot of, of things. It has the eco mode, the sport mode, and the EV mode. So yeah. So yeah, there's the HV button, so you can force it into the hybrid vehicle. So I think the normal mode kind of runs the battery almost to depletion, and then it'll fire HV mode up to kind of recharge the battery. But you can force it sooner if you if you know you're going to need more battery life. Like if you're you know taking an exit on the freeway and you'll be tootling around town, you may want to have a, a higher state of charge when yeah. you exit the freeway. What about the design? I think there are like some aspects that are really really good looking some others at least in my opinion there aren't that good yeah. like from the side the back wheel cover it's a, I know it's for aerodynamics but uh, yeah, I it think reminds Honda, me a little bit of the first generation inside yeah definitely I mean they were definitely going for a futuristic look something distinctive um, unfortunately there's some very nice elements personally I think of the design but 
ultimately the proportions give it a little bit of an awkward look if you're if you're looking at the profile of the car. I mean, styling is always a personal taste kind of oh, thing. Of course. You know, there's everybody has their preferences. I'd like a little more balance in the uh, proportions. Like that's one reason I think the new Accord looks so good. It's, it's got a nice long wheelbase. The overhangs are, you know, kind of more appropriate. This car kind of has a really long front overhang. And the the rear end is it tapers. It's all aerodynamics, and you know, it's very functional in that sense. So uh, form kind of follows function for sure in this car. But they they do try to make it, you know, kind of funky. But um, you know, also it's it's very Japanese. You know, Japan. You know, they're very high tech. You know, minded. And, they have to do kind of crazy things to get their cars to stand out and look modern and uh, I think clearly this was uh, influenced from that that yeah mindset. so this car uh, competes against uh, the Bolt, the Chevrolet Bolt, the original not the Bolt with the B right uh, even though GM calls it a fuel electric in reality is like a electric car with a, with a range extender yeah, exactly. so it's like a direct competitor of this also the Ford Fusion plug-in hybrid mm -hmm. and uh, the Prius obviously yeah with the Prius what is it the Max or Prime Prime yeah sorry yeah. but again for the price point and uh, the the amount of technology and features that you get and also as as you were mentioning like all the details uh, that the interior the material like this thing in the in the dashboard looks like wood it might not be wood I don't think but yeah. it looks really 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 yeah, nice. it's pretty rich look to it yeah. they actually have a ultra suede dashboard too which is kind of a it's almost like the material that's on the, the type, type R seats <laughs> but it's on the dash and it's stitched it's yeah. a, some nice details in the door as well I mean there's still a little bit of hard plastic here but like any even BMWs have this hard plastic on the lower part oh, of the doors. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the, uh, the way it is so Honda is saying that uh, by what year 2030 uh, two thirds of their all the lineup is gonna have some kind of electrification right, right? yeah so you know that's not too hard to achieve when you when you look at powertrains like this they're they're a two motor hybrid um, this is basically based upon the the, uh, the system that's in the Accord hybrid but it just uses a smaller uh, petrol motor so this has the 1.5 liter versus the Accord's two liter but it's essentially the same design philosophy and then obviously it has a larger battery so you get the 47 miles of pure EV yeah. range and this actually eliminates all the anxiety or like should eliminate I still there are some doubts in people that are like oh it's plug-in hybrid how do I charge it do I not like it the gas some people still have their anxiety concerns yeah. anxieties issues with all that but like this car should eliminate all that because you get more than 300 range with both systems 47 on, on only electric and then you can recharge it uh, when you are um, even while driving and then you can recharge the other yep uh, driving right or drive? left left yeah the other right yeah oh true so um, so yeah you can eliminate all those issues but still people they are still a learning curve for most consumers with this kind of technology and I think people were disappointed when they saw the official range figures of I think it's 340 for this car uh -huh. but it's showing 351 range and we've been driving for 40 miles already yeah exactly so, so we're in, I mean I guess so you, you learn you get used to, to yeah or you learn how much you're gonna get out of the car yeah and that's with a seven I believe it only has a seven gallon tank so that's to me that's pretty impressive to get yeah. miles close to 400 and miles. like with any other things I uh, I believe people get used to and start paying attention where's the charging stations where's like things because I once talked to a, a guy who was thinking of changing from a pickup truck with a gas engine to a diesel engine I said well I don't know we're gonna put gas I mean diesel like just pay attention there yeah, are tons yeah. of stations right right, right. <laughs> same thing with this and the infrastructure is growing right? yeah everywhere sure I mean you can always plug it in your garage yeah I mean, I mean just your regular 120 of course is take longer but yeah it's like a something like a 10 hour recharge overnight time. should do yeah. it yeah so it, you know 17 kilowatt hour battery roughly two kilowatts out of the 120 socket if, if you want to plug in or set up a, a, a charger in your house a level 2 or 240 then you're down to like two and a half hours charge yeah. time overall pretty impressive car I think uh, Honda is in the right path maybe I mean Toyota is celebrating 20 years of the Prius yeah Honda is coming a little bit late obviously to that party but I mean they're coming up with really good product right yeah I think so I mean this is a uh, really so far I'm very impressed so now you drove it and uh, we're going to pretty impressive numbers <laughs> yeah actually very impressive I mean the EPA estimate is a 340 mile range on a full tank of gas and I'm assuming with a full battery um, 
whatever it is officially we yep. are making up numbers yep and uh so far we've driven 96 miles and the trip computer uh is showing a range of 324 miles remaining so somehow so we, we only used 16 miles that's right that's that, incredible that's right. that is and we actually you know we haven't been hyper miling by any means i mean we actually been, the opposite i think yeah we, we were uh, pushing it hard in the twisties there yeah some pretty nice twisty roads out here in napa valley and uh some hills which um you know you hear the little 1.5 liter engine yeah spinning like up. trying too hard yeah at some point so overall performance i think is pretty good with this car but when you deplete the battery you start to hear that little 1.5 liter engine struggle a little yeah. bit when you're climbing hills it's and uh, i think honda rates it at like 200 212 20 total. 220 something yeah but uh, it's very optimistic as you said yeah i think that's with a full battery and everything yeah. in ideal state um but I'm very impressed with the ride and handling of this car. It's, it's really it's really impressive because it's it's not stiff, but it's very composed. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, it's just it was quite a bit of fun to drive. I thought. Excellent. And, and and also the fun aspect of it, not the actual driving, but also starting to play with like recharging the battery and yeah. how much we can get. Like now, like we're reaching 100 miles, and we only use like 16 miles of energy output. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like when the hill is coming down with the paddle shifters, you can start playing and like, yeah, uh, exactly. How much battery can I get back? Yeah. So we started uh, on this last decline at basically zero miles of battery because mm -hmm. we were whipping it up the hill and, and drained the battery completely. And then by the time we got to the bottom, we were up to five miles. Five miles, yeah. Uh, just a pure regen uh, range. So. Yeah, it's kind of fun, like you said. Uh, I know. Goof around like and that. And that also gives you, I mean, uh, for the people who have never used an electric car, they like so much to learn. But instead of being afraid of it, I think people should embrace it and like look at it and like like see what you can get with this. Yeah. I mean, when you think about like driving again, like a hundred miles, and using only sixteen miles of energy from both sources, it's it's an incredible thing. Yeah, I agree. Excellent. So, where we can uh, find your stuff, uh, Jeff? Uh, uh, Temple of Vtech, www. How many W's is that? W w you don't need that W's. People yeah, yeah. find it without the Vtech.net. Vtech.net. Excellent. Net. V -T -E -C Excellent. So, Excellent. Uh, all right, thanks. Well, we're going to finish the drive here today, and I don't think we're going to ever finish either the electric tank or the gas tank. <laughs> the gas tank, for sure, no. Maybe we push the electric, but I don't know. It's going to be even hard to do. Yeah, run. the range is still going up. I mean, yeah. we're, it's like a, a perpetual motion machine.